The game began with Nigel Short's traditional E4. Kasparov replied with the Nidorf variation of the Sicilian defence, this opening becoming a firm favourite. The moves remained exactly the same as in many previous games until Nigel Short's move on move nine. And here it is. He moved his queen to f3. Yes, in previous games, he'd moved either this pawn up to here or this pawn up to here. But the move he played is also perfectly good. And Kasparov immediately starts to counterattack on the queen side, advancing his pawn up here. It can go up here, maybe, and disturb the white knight. Short attacked with his pawn, and now Kasparov had to decide where to put his bishop. And this is Kasparov's move 10. He moved his bishop to d7. This looks a little bit odd in combination with the last move, b5, because you normally want to put your bishop there, but he has to protect this pawn. And so, short took. This is a very aggressive move. It's not a good move positionally, but it, after um, Kasparov recaptures, it opens up a line for the queen down here. And he's hoping to use that line and this line of the bishop to create tactical play before Kasparov can get developed properly. He brought his bishop out. Kasparov brought his bishop out. After a long thing, short castled. And here Kasparov castled. He might also have moved his queen from this square to this square. That might have been safer. But Kasparov castled. And now short initiated a really splendid tactical sequence. And this was the, uh, the key move. Move 14, he moved his pawn up the board to e5. This, um, people in the analysis room thought this was a bad idea, but in fact he'd analysed it very carefully and found a beautiful queen sacrifice. So Kasparov moves, he's opening up an attack down, down the line to the queen, and Short captured the bishop, Kasparov recaptured, and now Short played his idea, which is a tremendous one. He played just knight takes e4, leaving the queen to be taken. Kasparov had to take the queen, there was no choice. And now the point of the combination was this move, the pawn is attacking the queen, and this gains time. The queen has to move. Well, actually, Kasparov gave first an intermezzo, an intermediate check, which was recaptured. And now he's got both the queen and the rooker on prize, so it had to go away. And after this sequence, we reached a relatively quiet pos position. And if we take a census, we can see that Short has got two rooks, two knights, and five pawns. And Kasparov has got queen, rook, and bishop, and five pawns. I'm ignoring the kings, of course. Um, and normally, this would be a material advantage to Kasparov, because he's got nine points and a queen, whereas Short has got eight, rook and knight. But the big feature of the position is this guy, this enormous passed pawn. And this gives Short excellent compensation and quite good chances. Short moved the knight. It's attacking the bishop. The bishop went out of the way. Rook came into the center. And Kasparov advanced his pawn. And now, Short mustn't take this pawn, because if he did, the queen would go back from here to here, and it would set up a check on this diagonal. It would fork the king and rook. That would be a disaster. It would lose a rook. So Short advanced his pawn. Kasparov blocked. And now Short moved his rook up, attacking the bishop. And he has really quite good compensation, good chances of winning the bishop for the big passed pawn. And so at this point in the game, the play was centering on the pawn on d7. Now, uh, let's pick up the game with John Spielman and Fritz with black to move on move 23. Right. Well, actually, it's, it's much better for white than I thought at the time. It's tremendous, actually. This pawn is fantastic, the one I've outlined. Anyway, um, Kasparov tried to defend himself. He just tried to make trouble by pushing his pawn up. Short played a very quiet move. It's possibly could have done better than that. Kasparov advanced and Short went backwards. His knight could also have gone another way. And what Short is doing is he's just trying to make the position completely quiet so that that pawn, which is still marked, can win a piece. Kasparov's last move is probably not a good idea. Um, he's flaming around, but really um, the, the, the tactics now favor Short. And after Short's next move, in fact, Short is winning by force. Um, the, the, well, that leaves the rook on prize here, and Kasparov had to take it. But now Short has an excellent move. He advances his rook to this square with check. And this can't be taken, because if the rook took it, then the pawn would recapture and win all of Kasparov's pieces. So he had to move his king. 
Let's check again. And the king moved up. And now there was a choice. You could put either this guy or this guy on that square. And eventually, Short decided either move was very strong, but he chose to, to move the knight there. And so that was his 30-second move. Yes, that was Short's 30-second move. So let's join the game now with Kasparov to move on move 32 with Ray Keane and Daniel King commentating at the time. So we've got this really exciting position. Nigel Short, White, Kasparov, Black. Eight moves left to play. Nigel sacrificed his queen. He has this dangerous pass pawn on the seventh rank, full of tactics. The pawn threatening to go on and queen. And if queen takes pawn on d7, if Kasparov has Black plays that knight to f8 check, forks king and queen with the knight, famous forking piece, and should go into endgame with an extra piece for Nigel Short, which should be a win. Let's just go through these moves slowly. So we're looking at the queen taking the pawn. Then Short's knight will come here, checking. Oh, queen Kasparov's H2, moved. what's he done? Queen H2, my God, we didn't see it. So this is threatening a very nasty check down here. That would be mate. So what Short got, got against it? He's given a check. Knight F4 check. So if the queen takes the knight, takes the knight then he can simply get a queen. That's right. So where's the king going? This if, must, if this the must king, be a win. If the king goes to this square, then he gets a queen with check, and then he has a move to prevent, one move to prevent Kasparov's mate. So let me see, if the king goes to this square, now what's Short going to do then? Knight to d3. Knight d3 is pos. And then knight to e1, just to cement. It looks good. A cement city, that will end the game. This is, this is winning. Short is going to win his first game. He is, Kasparov has had it, I'm sure. I cannot see a move. Knight d3 is just going to win. The knight's going to go to e1 and be completely cemented in by the rook on e8. So once the king moves, the knight, say here, then the knight comes back so that if Kasparov checks, say here, then he can just move the knight back and then next move, get a queen. It looks like the end for Kasparov. Nigel Short's taking a queen. Nigel Short's got a white queen sitting on the edge of the board. Nigel ready with his By queen. His right hand, ready to queen. A standard trick by Grandmasters in Time Trouble, having the queen ready. There you go. There's the queen. He's ready to smash it down on this d8 square here. Touchdown square. Looks like the Nigel is about to land. Kasparov shaking. Yeah, oh. much more worried than we've ever seen him before. Shaking his head. This, this is, is a it. rare sight on UK television. The world champion about to lose a chess game. It's more difficult to beat Kasparov than it is to climb Mount Everest. It's more difficult to beat Kasparov than become a dollar billionaire, according to latest statistics. This is really a great day for Nigel Short and British chess. Now let's hope this can pick him up. Now come on, Nigel, just finish this one off. <laughs> but he's only got a few minutes left. Now, can he do it within the time? And there's the queen. There's the queen. That's the queen Nigel plans to She's ready for the move. coronation. <laughs> Will Kasparov resign? Has he got something up his sleeve? Well, Nigel's got a queen up his sleeve. But actually, it slipped out under the table. He's played him with king, king h6. h6. Now, come on, knight back to d3 to defend against that mate. He's running short of time. He's got, what has he got, two minutes left? Two and a half minutes left to make seven moves. Now, all Short needs to do is move that knight back to this square, defending against any tricks that Kasparov has against the king. And then next move he'll be able to get a queen. Short leaning over, looking at his clock. Play the damn move. There are probably other ways to win, actually.
Nigel looking at the clock again. Hmm. Short looking at his clock. Please don't lose What's time, he Nigel. Seen? As you say, maybe there are other moves to win. Short looking nervous. He's running short of time. He's down to one minute. And I'm not sure that the 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 time you, you see on the screen there is accurate. He's played it. Played knight d3. Excellent. That's the move we couldn't see a response to. If we look at his clock, it's one minute. The electronic timer there we had on the screen wasn't accurate. He's down to his final minute. There's the clock. He's got a minute to make six moves. But we don't see a defence for Kasparov. Well, one of the moves is going to be d8 equals queen, so that one's simple. And another one's going to be knight to e1. That one's not too hard to spot. <coughs> this could be it. Ordinarily, Kasparov would resign here, I'm sure. It's only the clock that's keeping Kasparov going. Waiting, hoping, perhaps praying for a repetition of game one where Nigel Short lost on time with a move to make. I think it's over. There doesn't seem to be he's a moved. defense. Queen check. He's checked. Rook e1. He's moved, the, he's moved the rook back. Well, that's, that's strange. He could have played the knight back. Now, can Kasparov... I don't understand that at all. He's moved his queen, queen back G5. to g5. What is Nigel doing? Why didn't he play the knight back? Perhaps he's just got to move move the rook back here to threaten. He's moved he's moved his knight in. Knight e5. Oh. What is he doing? What is he doing? <coughs> well, he's certainly rook h1 check, actually. The threat is rook h1. He's played g6. I think Nigel missed that the bishop can come back to take that knight if there's if it checks. N oh, Nigel, what is that? He can play knight c6. If knight c if the knight comes to c6, then queen f5 threatens a mate down here. Yes. And no, if the knight checks on f7, bishop. the bishop Nigel, comes Nigel, down. Nigel, I think, is, what's he done? He's played rook f1. Rook f1. He's made this much more difficult for himself. He Kasparov played. suddenly in with a chance. Now, why didn't he play knight e1? He made this considerably more difficult for himself. Nigel's clock flare hanging again. Three moves still to make. Three moves to make, and Why Nigel has didn't he play rook knight to e1? Down to his final seconds. Ah, <coughs> oh, I think he missed something there. Not another tragedy. I can't believe this. Oh, good grief! He knows. He knows. He's missed something terrible. The game is certainly not over. That's extraordinary. That really is extraordinary. How could he do this? And now his knight on d2 is pinned. The queening square is defended. And he's had to play rook f1 as a defensive move, to be absolutely honest. The rook Bishop comes back to e6. That's a strong move from Kasparov. That means he can... He can check he must take that short knows he's blown it but shaking takes, his head rook takes just one move to he's make he's got one move to control. make but his his position's gone downhill he's still got this incredibly strong pass pawn here but kasparov can stop stop the pawn queening well, he may still be winning, you know. <coughs> he may still... Short may still be winning if he can make the moves because that pawn is still very There strong. we go, Short. Just seconds to spare. And uh, what's Kasparov's next move? He's a bit short of moves. Oh, that camera flash went off there. I'm sure that doesn't help him. He's threatening Rook F8 winning at once. So sh uh, Kasparov's got to deal with that threat. I think Kasparov must move his queen here so that the Rook is attacked and also the pawn at the same time. So once Black's queen comes over here, the pawn is attacked and the rook as well. That sets a few problems for Short. 
he's there played you it. go. And he's, and he's played rookie seven. Uh, has it? Yes, his clock flag hasn't fallen. He's passed the time control. He's made 40 moves, but his position, I think he missed a win. So Short made that time control with just four seconds, can you believe, to spare. But had he lost his chance? 40 moves. We now rejoin the game with Nigel Short in check on move 43 with Short to play. So the king is in check. If the king moves up one square to here, then the queen can take the knight with check. Not a good idea for Short. Likewise, if the king moves to this square, the queen could also take the knight with check and then come back to defend the pawn. So it looks like Short must either move the king here or simply move the knight back. Which he will do in the rear draw. Then... Kasparov must defend against the pawn queening, and he can do that by just moving his queen here. And that'll be a repetition of moves. They'll repeat the position. If they do that, then the game should end in a draw. And there's no way that Kasparov, after perhaps knight e4 to d2, can play his queen to the side, either to b6 or g5, to cover d8 but then white will play rook on f7 to f8 and then force through the pawn the pawn which is no longer going to become a queen this is it this is this is completely drawn isn't it both flags flying there nigel's still up both players away from the board nigel just come no back. restroom shorts returned I think he's just going to have to reconcile himself. It's fantastic how many games in this match and this perpetual check draws. And it shows the open fighting nature of the, st of the play, that instead of reaching draws by attrition, one's getting draws by you know, enormous explosions where the material's in balance. Yeah, there goes the knight. This is Short the moving the knight back. That's basically an invitation. And Kasparov will either offer a draw draw. or Short will offer a draw. Kasparov will play queen d3 and they'll agree a draw. Comes. Another lucky escape with the black pieces for Gaza Kasparov. There we Queen go. D3. They've yep. repeated the position. Yeah, draw. They've and they've agreed to yes. draw. Yes. Yeah. A wonderful game that we feel Nigel missed at least one win. The score after ten games then, seven and a half to two and a half, Kasparov maintaining his five-point lead. Well, immediately after the game, I asked Nigel whether, after spending 52 minutes before he castled, did the game then go according to the plan he'd considered? My original intention was to sacrifice the queen, and then I noticed uh, that, uh, uh, that, that Gary, in instead of playing knight e4, could play knight d5, and then I thought he had a... Uh, an advantage after this, and maybe even a clear advantage. And uh, I just, um, I couldn't decide what to do here because I could see no way, no way of playing this, uh, this position. This was my problem. So I decided just to proceed with my original intention. And, uh, you know, fortunately, I, I got a chance in the game. How do you feel about that queen sacrifice, Gary? Hi, uh, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> I completely forgot that my knight can sometimes can go back, you know. Just now when I said knight <laughs> I don't e5, believe that, Mr. Yes, Kasparov. the knight, knight can go back on e7. I, uh, I had a very good feelings after uh, uh, bishop g5, bishop e7, and this position. When Nigel was singing for 52 minutes. I mean, I felt that my position is very good, probably even better at that point. And I, I expected him just to castle long side and, uh, or just oh, short side. Uh, I mean, both cases, I believe my position was very good. And I, uh, yes, I was absolutely unwise, more than unwise. So I would say stupid to allow him to sacrifice the queen because I think that after queen sacrifice, white is winning. And you think that was the turning <coughs> point there for Oh, no, I, I think white game. is just winning, you know. After knight, the knight fe4, black, black must lose. Would you say then, Gary, that that was your biggest blunder during oh. game 10? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's, you know, after this move, you know, I, I could um, hope only for the miracle, but... <laughs> okay, well, Nigel, uh, let's move on towards the end game. Um, do you think that there were any chances of playing on for White in the final position? Uh, well, I, uh, the, the point was actually I couldn't play anymore at this moment. <laughs> uh, 
this was my, my problem, you know, just uh, I saw that uh, I, I had almost certainly missed s s several wins and uh, uh, my it, uh, I just didn't have it in me to, to Psychologically. continue. Psychologically? Well, also, I, I think the position is not clear. He has lots of checks, and uh, it's possible to lose such positions if you're, if you're not careful. Well, Nigel Short there, um, admitting, really, that he, he lost some uh, winning moves. John, could we show one of the moves uh, that he missed on well, Fritz? Well, this is the absolutely clearest line. He could have played this check here. This was on move 36. This yeah. is the move he could have made. And the king moves, and so now you give check with the knight. The queen can't take it, because then this enormous unit here would queen. So you have to, have to move your king. Uh, and then the simplest thing to do, excuse me, is just to move the knight up there. And this... Um, controls that square, this square is controlled, the pawn is going to queen, I don't know, he can do this move if he likes, and the rook gives check, and then he plays pawn equals queen, and he's got, um, how much more? Um, so a rook the pawn and, rook on d7 could go to d8, d8 and, and become, become a queen. queen, and he'd have a rook and a knight extra, and be giving checkmate as well.